Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, my question is also about dreams. Uh, you spoke about dreams as uh, like a representation of truths and universal truths that uh, can be interpreted into like myths and, and religion. And uh, as, as you say, it, it's very beneficial for the individual. And it sounds like also for, for the society as well, because not everyone can as easily um, um, uh, re remember their dreams or, or interpret th their dreams like that. And also it's, it's um, like broadcasted to, to all of society for their benefit. So I guess I'm, I'm wondering what the, the evolutionary uh, advantage of dreams are. And I, uh, my question would be, do you think that dreams um, uh, suggest some sort of uh, evolutionary group selection, such as like, groups that don't have these dreams that are represented into myths and religion, do you think they, they didn't survive as well? Okay, so I'm not going to answer the second part of that question because I'd have to go far too far off in a tangent for me to manage right now, but I can answer the first part. I mean, what happens when you're dreaming, there's a little switch, so to speak, in your brain that shuts off when you're dreaming and it stops you from moving, right? It shuts everything off except your eyes because, who, you know, if you're moving your eyes back and forth, you're not going to get run around and get eaten by a lion, it's okay to move your eyes. But the rest of you is staying exactly where it is. Then you can run these simulations. And so what's happening at night, and this is a fairly well accepted theory of dreaming. We know that dreams update memories and help consolidate memories. They also help you forget. But what seems to be happening at night is that you're, you're running the underlying architecture of your cognitive ability in different simulations. And it's cost free because you're you're paralyzed, you're not running around there out in the world investigating. So it's part of the manner in which your brain experiments with the way the world can be represented. And so, and it seems absolutely necessary. And I mean, if you deprive people of REM sleep, they, they don't stay sane very long. There's something necessary about the dreaming process to maintenance of, the, of, of, of articulated sanity. So. You're doing some kind of organization at night when you descend into that chaos. And partly what seems to happen is that your categorical, you know, your categories have boundaries, right? But sometimes you don't have the categories correct. And so the boundaries have to loosen and other things need to be put in the categories or some things shunted away. And in the dream, the category structure loosens, which is why dreams are so peculiar. But they're experimenting. It's your mind is experimenting with the underlying categorical structure of imagination and trying to update your, your mode of being in the world. Dreams often concentrate on things that provoke anxiety. So if you wake people up when they're dreaming, the most commonly reported emotion is anxiety. And so the dream is like the first stages of the attempt to contend with the unknown. And so the dream is half unknown and half known, which is also why it's so peculiar, you know, because you kind of understand it, but you don't really. And it, it, it partakes of the unknown and of the known. And it's the bridge between the two, something like that. So 